Hello and welcome back to episode 4 of Highway to PowerShell, a series where we cover a few minutes of PowerShell every week. So far, we've only worked with output that ends up written to the screen. In longer and more complex scenarios, we will soon have the need to store output in memory to be used later on. To solve this, we use variables. In this episode, we're going to cover the basics around how variables works in PowerShell. But make sure you stay all the way to the end, because I have a few tricks I want to show you that I don't think too many people are aware of. I tend to think of variables as containers that collect anything that falls into them. If there is no container in place to collect the output, it simply falls out and gets written to the screen. In episode 2, we worked with the process vi and got a reference to it by running get process vi. If we want to store the output in a variable to use later, we simply type a dollar sign followed by the variable name and an equal sign, like this. This time, we didn't get any output because anything output by get process was collected by the variable proc. To output the content of the variable, we simply type dollar sign proc. We often use variables to store output just like this, but we can also use them to store simple values, like for example a piece of text, or a number, or a boolean value. We can also store several values in one variable by separating them by commas. And we can even store several objects that has different types into one single variable, like this. If we now pipe var to get member and scroll up, we'll see that var contains values of different types. First, we get a system string, and all the members of that, we get a system in32, which is the number, and least, at least we get a system boolean, which is the value true. If we want to be more specific, we can use a technique called casting to tell PowerShell that a variable can only contain objects of a certain type. We do this by typing the type name in brackets before the variable, like this. So in this example, we're going to tell PowerShell that var string can only contain items of type string. And these brackets in the end means array, so it tells PowerShell that it will contain one or multiple strings. If we leave out the brackets, it will only contain one string. Now piping var string to get member just like we did with var will show us that we now only get one type, which is system string. When using typecasting like this, PowerShell will automatically convert anything that is stored in a variable to a string before it's stored. If an object can't be converted to the specified type, we will get an error stating just that. Like this. Here we can see that the text 3 could not be converted to a number, so we got an error message. Now, let me clear the screen. A common mistake when working with variables is to store the output of a format command in a variable. Let's take the example with the vi process again. When writing this out to the screen, we get the result in a the table. There is a few format commands that can be used to change the format of the output. The most common ones are format table and format list. Here is an example of using format list. This time we can see that we get a similar output, but now presented as a list instead of a table. Let's try to store this output in a variable. When we have an object stored in a variable, we can access a single property of that object by using a dot. As we saw in the output above, process, have a property called name. We can output only the value of this property by running $proc.name. Seems to work alright. Let's try the same with the proc list. That's strange, we didn't get any output. Let's try just outputting the variable. That seems to work fine. Let's use getMember to investigate. Here we see that the variables does not contain any process object at all, but a whole bunch of format objects. So if I scroll all, all the way up, you can see that we get a format start data, a group start data, 
and a format entry data, and a group end data, and a format end data. This is because all the format commands actually transforms the objects into format data. It's therefore very important to remember to never store output from a format command into a variable. It will most probably have some unexpected results. All the variables we create ourselves are called user-created variables. There are also some special variables in PowerShell. These are mainly divided into two categories, automatic variables and preference variables. Automatic variables are variables that PowerShell creates for us that we can use to get information about the environment. Examples of automatic variables are PS version table, which will give us the details and version of the PowerShell we're running right now. We also have the variable $home, which gives us the full path to our home directory. And we have the variable $null, which is a bit special because it represents an empty value. Anything that is assigned to $null will simply be ignored. So doing $null equals to something is a great way to just ignore or throw away that output. You can learn more about automatic variables in the help document called About Automatic Variables. I've also linked to the online version in the description below. Preference variables, on the other hand, are variables that we can use to customize the behavior of PowerShell. A change to a preference variable does only last until you exit PowerShell. Some examples are error action preference. Error action preference has the default value of uh, continue. This means that the errors will be shown, but might not stop execution unless the developer of the script wanted it to do so. We can, for example, set this to stop to make all errors stop execution. Another example is the error view variable. It will customize the way errors are displayed. In PowerShell 7, we got the new concise view that is the default, and it shows only an error message. Here, if I run the command that doesn't exist, you can see an example of the concise view output. In Windows PowerShell, the older version 5, error view has the default value of normal view, which will show a more detailed output when we run the same non-existing command. And here we can see that we get a, more, a little bit more verbose output. There are a lot more preference variables. To learn about them all, check out the help document about preference variables, or use the link in the description below. This covers the most basic and common use of variables in PowerShell. But there are also a set of commands we can use to work with variables. To list them all, we run git command noun variable. Here we can see that we can clear a variable. This will just remove the content and make it an empty variable. Note that we use just the name and no dollar sign here. This could also be done by assigning the value null, just like this. We can also get, create new, remove or set a variable. A thing to note here is that the new variable only works if the variable doesn't already exist while set variable will work for both creating and overwriting a variable. And now to the moment you've all been waiting for, the tricks with variables. So trick number one, the commands new variable and set variable supports options using the parameter option. Valid options are all scope, constant, none, private, and read only. These can be used in combination. For example, the options constant and read only can sometimes come in handy. Let's have a look at an example. Creating a variable with the option read only means that it can't be changed unless we use the command set variable. So as you can see here, when I try to change the value, I get an error message. However, if I use set variable with the parameter dash force, I don't have a problem overwriting a variable that is read only. If I instead use the option constant to the variable, it can't be changed even if I use the force parameter. Trick number two. New variable also has a parameter called visibility. This defaults to public, but if we set it to private, the variable will not show up when listing variables, and it can only be accessed by scripts or commands created in the current scope. Let's try. 
So here I create a new variable called secret with the value sh and set it to visibility to private. If I now try to get all variables that starts with an S, you can see that my secret variable isn't shown at all. If I try to just access the variable from where I am, I'll get the permission denied. However, if I create the script that get the variable and then run the script, the variable can be read. This is by no means a secure way to store secrets, but it's kind of a cool trick. And last but not least, trick number three. It's a little known fact that uh, variables actually have descriptions. Many of the automatic variables already have it populated. If we, for example, list all the preference variables and select the name and the description, we can see that we have a description on each of the variables. We can also create our own variables with description using new or set variable. Here I create a new variable called variable with a value cool and I set the description to variables are cool. And then I list my variable and select all the properties and we can see that the name is variable and it has a description saying variables are cool. And that's it for this week. If you found this helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. See you next week and until then, keep automating.